Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be performing a bit of a paint experiment using contrast paints. I want to attempt to paint a Hive Fleet Behemoth Tyranid. And what I'm really aiming to do is try and reproduce that blue to black fade that they have on their carapace. I'm going to be starting with just some Blood Angels Red on all the flesh. And I'm going to be thinning that down just a little bit with contrast medium. And then what I'm going to be trying to do is going over the carapace first with Talisar Blue and then attempting to just kind of hit the middle of each plate with the Basilicanum Gray. I don't know that this is going to work. So let's uh, let's play along and find out. So I'm going to do first those. I'm just going to take the Blood Angels Red. And what I found with especially the reds, but contrast in general, is it behaves a lot better if it's been thinned, even if it's been thinned just a little bit. So I'm going to get you know a couple brush loads of red here. Maybe one more, just in case. I'm going to take some contrast medium, about 50-50. Make sure no red siphoned up into the brush there. And because the flesh is the hardest part to reach, I'm just gonna slap this on basically the whole bottom side of the model. I'm going to try and avoid the claws, but it's actually a lot easier to slap contrast paint on quickly and then go back and fix the base coat where it shouldn't have gone than it is to apply it slowly. When you apply it slowly, that's when you start to get the pooling effects happening, which make it look, you know, not quite as good. Whereas if you apply it quickly, You'll have some mistakes to fix, but it's faster to fix the mistakes than it is to not make them in the first place. It's like I didn't really want the red on the gun, but it'll be easier to fix because it'll be less splotchy. So make the mistakes, go back and fix them later. That's kind of the, uh, the lesson here. Or, you know, don't fix them. Depends on how big a mistake they are. Like right there, I just completely went over the leg care base because I fully forgot it was there. And just check the model from a couple different angles, see if there's any base coat spots missing. I should mention this base coat is the Citadel Gray Seer. Yeah, like the back of this arm is completely missed. A little bit of the head here. That's kind of his hand. The problem with tiered hands is they're sort of, you know, permanently affixed to their weapons. So it can sometimes be a little difficult to tell where their hand stops and the weapon begins. But, you know, give it your best guess. Or just paint the weapon their flesh tones and then don't worry about it. But typically, High Fleet Behemoth are painted with red flesh and black or gray weapons, so I wanted to be as true to that as I could. Still not even sure if the actual experiment part of this is going to work. I probably should have done a little test first, but if it does pan out, I'll have a completed High Fleet Behemoth model in a couple seconds. Well, minutes. And again, just looking kind of in the undercarriage of the model, see if there's any spots I've missed. Looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to leave all that to dry. 
and come back to it in a few minutes. So now that the Blood Angels Red is fully dry, I'm going to take some of the gray sear base and just touch up areas where I obviously got red that I shouldn't have. Yes, and I'm finding this is probably the most efficient way to use contrast paints is to make a mistake and then fix it. Because the paints dry better if they go on in one sort of quick successive layer. If you paint them on slowly to give yourself more control, that's also when they kind of, you know, get that sort of that coffee stain or that splattery sort of look. Because they don't really dry at the same rate. So the quicker you can apply a thin, even coat to a surface, the better the result will be, even if it means you have to get some paint where you didn't really intend to get it. You can see, you know, these touch-ups are not taking that long. I'm just realizing I actually didn't get a little bit of red around the, uh, the sort of the flesh holding the hoof on the back too here. So I want to just touch that up later. But at this moment, I'm going to leave it alone. And we'll revisit the red as a very last step if I need to. Now here, of course, I just completely covered the carapace on this leg. And a couple of these areas just need a second little pass. We'll get those quickly. There's just a tiny bit of red showing through. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Again, the goal here is tabletop, right? The goal is not to have a display quality piece. It's to get this miniature on the table in a quick amount of time so it looks good at, you know, tabletop distance. And that's the one thing to kind of consider is that, you know, when you're painting a model, you're often painting like six to eight inches from your face. But you're not really gaming at those distances. At least I really hope you're not. You know, normally when you're gaming, the models are several feet away from you. And so small little blemishes that look really bad up close while you're painting are effectively non-existent at distance. That's just something to consider, because, you know... You kind of just need to paint to your uh, paint to your usage, right? If you're trying to paint a tabletop army for gaming, not every model needs to be perfect. You know, put more effort into your generals or your leaders, your commanders, your elite troops, but your line grunts—they don't always need as much love. So the next thing I'm going to do is just hit the body of the gun with a quick coat of Basilicanum Gray, and then we'll start working on the carapace. There we go. Okay, so now for the experiment, for the part I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna start by base coating all of the carapace with Talisar Blue. 
But in case this doesn't work, I'm actually just going to do his head first. The Talisar Blue is a very, very potent color. Actually, it, if it pools enough, might almost work on its own. So one thing to note right now is that the eye sockets are completely filled with Blood Angel's Red, and obviously that's not what we want for the finished miniature. So one of the very, very last detailing steps will be just to get a little bit of base coat back on those. That actually might work as it is not quite as dark, but I'm going to let that dry, see how the pooling takes. You know, it might be sufficient. Well, uh, we'll find out. Okay, so the Talisar Blue is totally dry now. And, you know, that's a passable High Fleet Behemoth look, but I want something a little bit darker, a little more true to the original colors. So what I'm going to try here is actually just giving that a light coat of Leviathan Blue and seeing how that works. Because the color around the edges is perfect, it's just a little bit too bright still in the middle. I'm already getting the feeling that's going to work perfect, but we're going to just cover it all the way around, see how it goes. Now, unfortunately, we do is just wait again for that to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to get a coat of Talisar Blue on all the other carapace. We'll start there. Very, very liberal with this, trying to apply it in one thick, even coat. But I am now trying to avoid getting it on the uh, red areas. And get this on the carapace on the gun as well. Make sure to get those edges. So I'm going to let that fully dry. While I'm waiting, though, I'm going to throw just some uh, Gilman flesh on the tube on the back of the gun here. Or Fire Slayer flesh, because it's what I found first. <laughs> So I was about to paint the claws and hooves all in Skeleton Horde, and then I remembered that on High Fleet Behemoth, they're actually done the same color as the Carapace, so we're going to get some Talisar Blue on those as well. I'm 
And right there, there's just a little bit of the red I missed, so I'll come back in and just touch that up later. Right, so now we're letting all that dry. You can see we're pretty close to dry here. We just have some deeper pools along the back, and we just want to let those finish up. Then we'll go ahead with a coat of love in blue. All right, the Talisar blue is fully dry, so we're going to go ahead with the coat of love in blue on the rest of the carapace now. And this front panel here, I think I got too much light and blue on it, so I'm going to just blot a little bit away. Alright, now again, we just wait for that to dry. Okay, the Levite in blue is basically dry now. There's just a little bit kind of pooled behind the back of the head, and I'm not too worried about that right now because I'm not going to be working in that area. Now, this is good enough for tabletop. You could stop right here, but I'm going to go just a little bit further. First I want to do is just pick out the teeth and the eyes because they're just kind of lost details. But I think what I'm also going to do is just take a little bit of techless blue and just edge highlight the carapace. So first I'm just going to come back in with the gray sear base coat and we're just going to get a little bit of that on the brush and just pick out the teeth. And what I'll do is I'll just throw a coat of Skeleton Horde over these so they don't have to be perfectly picked out because it will add some shadow back anyway. So you know, if I accidentally fill in a little bit between the teeth, it's not going to matter. So right now he's got a big toothy smile and it looks ridiculous. That's okay. And then I want to do the same with the eyes and they're a little bit harder so I'm going to use a smaller brush here. So while I'm letting that set, I'm going to get the Teclas Blue out. Now I've transferred my Teclas Blue to a dropper bottle, so I'll be using it on a palette off camera rather than from the pot. And all I want to do with this is just bring up the edges of the carapace a little bit. So 
So you can see the areas where I left the Telstar blue exposed at the edge still look pretty good. It kind of has a natural highlight to it. So you certainly, just with a little more practice, you know, this wouldn't be necessary whatsoever. And in reality, it's not necessary. It's just something I'm doing to make the models stand out just a little bit more. You know, it's only an extra, you know, maybe two minutes a model to do this. Claws And lastly, just the same on the gun. Now you can just treat the contrast painting as a sort of base coat and spend as much time as you want improving the detail. Or you can accept that this is, you know, one of a hundred gaunts that's going to take the table and he really doesn't matter that much. But, you know, it wouldn't be a lot of extra effort to just sort of add in that, uh, the striated look to the uh, carapace, you know, just a couple little extra lines. You could work that in pretty quickly. Basically, you can just add that in with a series of tapering lines. And I'm certainly not recommending you do it for every model, but it's an option if you want it there. Every little bit of time you spend painting makes them look less and less like they were just painted with contrast paint, right? Which, of course, is also the truth. <laughs> the more time you spend covering up the contrast paint, the less of the model was painted with contrast paint. But that alone pretty quickly just adds a little extra layer of detail. You can bump that up even further with a lighter blue, but I don't see the need. So I got two things left to do here. I'm going to get a little bit of skeleton horde on the teeth, and then we'll get some and yellow in the eyes. Alright, there's our finished High Fleet Behemoth Termagant. Hey, if you enjoyed this video here on YouTube, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new videos. You can also join me at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday evenings at 8.30pm Eastern for live painting and sculpting shows. If you'd like to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps cover the cost of paint, models, and all my video production gear, but more importantly, it helps keep food in my kid's belly and a roof over his head. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my patrons and Twitch subscribers, both past and present. Your ongoing support and encouragement is really what makes this possible. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.